All right. Hi, how are you? I'm David Andine on the reference design team here at Maxim Integrated. And today we're going to introduce one of Maxim's latest and greatest reference designs, the MaxRef Des 117, a heart rate monitor. And we're going to take a little bit of a different tack today and actually hook it up, show you how it works, take a little data. So stay tuned. This is going to be a good one today. I have the honor of being joined by Gordon Lee, who's on the reference design team here at Maxim. And Gordon was the actual designer of this module. So Gordon, thanks for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. No problem. I'm glad to be here. All right, great. And it's always good to have the actual designer here of the system to give us insight on why he made certain decisions, what he did, how he did it to help make it a better, uh, more functional module for all of you guys. So. The board that we're talking about here is the Max Ref Des 117. It's this tiny little module in the middle of the uh, screen here where I'm pointing. And it's a heart rate monitor. So what it's got on it is our Max 30102, which is an optical heart rate sensor chip. It actually has integrated red and IR LEDs. So it's a pretty nice solution there. It's got I square C out, so it's it's all fully contained from optical all the way to digital. And then we've also got two other parts on there, the MAX1921, which is a DC to DC converter that converts your input voltage down to a 1.8, which is the bias voltage of the heart rate chip, the MAX30102. And then we've got a level translator, the MAX14595 to translate the logic level voltage. Right, Gordon? Did yes, get it that's all right? correct. Okay, great. Now, there's some really cool things about this reference design. I, I, I call this a pretty groovy reference design mm -hmm. because uh, on here, we're supplying firmware for this guy to operate on both Arduino and Embed platforms. So you see I've got both my Arduino Uno here as well as my uh, Maxim embed platform. Yes, Maxim does make microcontrollers. We make really cool ones, very highly analog integrated microcontrollers as well as uh, really uh, simple, low power, fast memory write microcontrollers. So think about Maxim for your next microcontroller and pick up the Max 32600 embed board as well if you like to develop on embed. Back to the heart rate monitor design. Uh, we've got code that operates on both types of platforms. So whatever you like to develop in, go ahead and uh, operate with that code. And then we also have a heart rate algorithm on here that we're offering. And that's for free, open source. Uh, we've got the algorithm obviously running on both platforms. And uh, Gordon, as you know, uh, heart rate algorithms aren't easy to come by, are they? No, we require a lot of engineering time. To, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of IP, a lot of engineering time. I think people are making a lot of money on those. Uh, the algorithm we're offering, it's, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it's the Cadillac, but it's a pretty cool algorithm mm -hmm. and it's free open source. So people right. can take it, develop whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and make improvement on it. Absolutely, absolutely. We hope to see uh, improvements on it, see what you guys can do with it. So what we wanted to do today is go ahead and get this guy going and show you how it operates. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull it together. You can see if you look at the board itself, um, what we've done is we've made a small board with uh, th thicker pads there so that you can uh, stitch it into any kind of wearable uh, piece of garment or apparel that you want to wire it into. And we've also uh, mirrored the I square C lines on both the top and the bottom of the board. So I'm just going to point in here and you can see the top and the bottom. That's got your, uh, your SCL, your SDA, and your, and your interrupt lines and the uh, bias voltage and the ground are on either side. So I'm just going to go ahead and show uh, this other module where we've already soldered in some wires here just to make the setup a little bit easier. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this right into our Arduino board. I think we'll, does that, that's so good? You want to start with our yes, Arduino board? Yes, start with Arduino, yes. Okay, great. So uh, the first one is the VN, which would be 3.3. Uh, but Gordon, could I could I run it off of five? Is there any limitation? Yes, you you can run it off uh, from five because we have the level translator uh, and also the step down uh, converter on our reference design board, so you can support both three point three and five volt logic. 
Okay, very nice, very nice. So a little bit flexible for you, and you can operate off of you know just about any platform that you want to. Yes, because our system only requires very little power, maybe uh, typically less than 5.5 milliwatts. Okay, wow. So when, the, when we fire this guy up, we're not going to need to even uh, borrow power from anything else, right? It's just power from the USB connection? Right, right. Okay, very nice. And let's see, I put my SDA line in there on the Arduino board. I'm sorry if the view isn't great. What I'll do is once I get these lines in, I'll back off a little bit and hopefully you can get, does that get a good view, guys? Good overhead view? We got it, we got it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this last line, the interrupt that goes into pin 10, right? Pin 10, yes. Okay, let's make sure that that's in there and that's how you wire it up. It's that simple, right? Yes. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, so then let's go ahead and uh, wire this up to the computer and get it going. Sound good? Sure. So we've got our USB type B cable that will connect up here and I will connect it to my computer. Oops, bouncing around there a little bit. And then um, we'll go ahead and get out the uh, get out the source code for this. So when you're looking at the MaxRef Des 117 on our website, go to the Design Resources tab, and there should be a link on there to GitHub. We put the Arduino code on GitHub, so you can access it there. It's really easy. I, th I think that's pretty much how people like to access their code, right? Right. Now it is. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So on my computer, I got the firmware already pulled up. So we will uh, see it on the screen here, and I'm just going to click on that, double click on that INO file, and it'll bring up our Arduino development environment. Okay. So let's go ahead and maximize that. Let me make sure that I'm on the, uh, the right board. I'm on Arduino Uno, and I've got my COM port selected. So Gordon, I'm going to go ahead and compile this code. Mm -hmm. um, while we do that, can, can you tell, tell me which platform boards did you test on from, from an Arduino standpoint? Okay. Uh, from Arduino, I've tested on the Adafruit's Flora board okay. and also the LilyPad USB board. Okay, nice. So, so you're kind of your form factor wearable type, yes. type boards. In fact, we have uh, one of those uh, Adafruit Flora boards right here. And uh, it's this guy right here. Very, very nice board. Uh, very well done, you guys at Adafruit. Thumbs up, like it. And we'll show a little special demo at the end here to get people excited about what they can do with this. Sure. Um, but for now, we're going to stick with the Uno. We've uh, compiled the code. I notice we get a message here. It says low memory available. Uh, do we need to worry about that? No, that's fine. The code okay. is fully tested. So does the code use up a lot of memory? What's yes, going, definitely. Going the, the algorithm uses a lot of memory because um, the more data you can store in the memory, that, that means a longer periods of heartbeat data that helps the algorithm to um, calculate the heart rate more accurately. Okay, okay. And how much, uh, how much data are we gathering on the Arduino here? On the Arduino side, uh, we gather uh, four seconds of data okay. running at uh, 25 samples per second. Okay, cool. So yeah, hmm. four doesn't seem like too much if you're mm. I mean, if you're beating at, say, 60 beats per minute, that's only, that's four beats, right? So yeah, it's just four cycles. Not a lot. But I guess mm -hmm. that's, that's the Arduino, right? So yes. that's what you're, that's how you're operating. Okay, we've got this guy compiled. And so we're going to go ahead and upload it to our board. We're cranking away on that. And the upload is successful. So we can just go right to the integrated COM port here, right? Or the serial monitor? Yes. Okay. Let's crank that guy up. And right away we get press any key to start conversion. So when I press a key and go here, mm -hmm. it's going to start measuring, right? Right. Okay. I'm going to put my finger on here then. This is, this is meant to operate with your fingertip or some other type of fleshy extremity. Uh, like your ear. You could do it on your ear, your ear yeah, lobe. Yeah. 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 I've, I've heard people try it on the wrist. I've heard mm -hmm. it doesn't work that well. Although Not some as people, well. okay, yeah. okay. So that is one of the uh, characteristics of this guy. So I hit my button here, and off we go. So what are we seeing here, Gordon? Okay. Um, so the first column at the left side um, it shows the red LED readings. The second column is the IR LED readings, 
And then the third column uh, that was that is important. This is a calculated heart rate. Uh, and then the fourth column says HR valid. When this value is one, that means the calculated value is valid. So okay. same thing for the uh, for the SpO2. Okay, great, great. And my heart rate, it looks pretty good. Maybe around 83, maybe set you know high 70s, low 80s, but it's bouncing around a little bit. What, what could be going on there? Right, you, you have to apply constant pressure uh, on the sensor. Okay. Otherwise, uh, it, it won't <laughs> be accurate. So I'm probably shaking a little bit. Yes. And I know if I if I take a deep, my, my SPO2, my pulse ox is 199, but if I take a deep breath, it should drop, right? Yes. So let me try that. <sighs> Let's see if we can get that guy to bounce around. Ah, it didn't bounce around. Okay, well, I guess my I guess my pull socks is really good today. <laughs> okay, okay, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and uh, stop doing that guy and go ahead and migrate over to the embed platform and see how that guy works. Sure. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay, awesome. Gordon, as as I'm moving over and wiring it up, mm -hmm. um, can you comment on the uh, the DC to DC power supply and the level translator? Um, what what were the characteristics that made you want to design okay. those guys in? Um, so the DC to DC converter um, is the Max 1921. Yeah, um, 1921. Yes, the Max 1921. Um, it is, uh, uh, it consumes very little power and it doesn't require a lot of external components because uh, internally it has a uh, rectifier. So um, if I remember correctly, it only requires three caps and one inductor, and you don't need to um, have uh, external MOSFET. That saves you a lot of space. Okay, nice. And I know you were pretty space constrained on this yes, design. Yes, yes, that's right. And then um, for the level translator, that is MAX14595. Um, that is also consumes very little power, uh, and it's i squared is compatible. Uh, because okay. for I square C, it requires bidirectional communication, mm -hmm. but not all the trans uh, level translator are bidirectional. Okay. Okay. Good point. Good point. Very nice parts. Cool building block parts. People can put in their designs. Put in any design. Uh, all right. We've wired up the embed board, and just want to make sure everybody's got a good, clear view of that from overhead. We've got our um, voltage in to the three three. We've got our ground to the ground, obviously, and then the uh, the SD. I'm sorry, the SCL line is the top one on the right side header there. The SDA is the second to top, and then a little bit further down, that interrupt pin is wired to P20. Yes, right? P20. That right. You know, I always want to double check this. Sorry, I may have screwed it in too much. Um, these boards get smaller as I get older. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's go ahead and fire up the, uh, the embed one. If you've never worked on embed, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's, it's a little bit different than Arduino, but mostly the same. Uh, what, you, what you find is that the uh, development environment is cloud-based, which is, takes a little getting used to, but it's kind of cool. It's cool, yes. And uh, you know, obviously you can take it anywhere. And then, yeah, I find the micros are pretty darn powerful on this. They are. And the community's building up some, some pretty good content. Right. So let's see. And, and you know, for our reference designs, I, I will say we are, we're using, we're developing for both Arduino and, and Embed because I, I think it's just a question of what a person prefers, right? Exactly. We'll be happy to provide both. So we are all wired up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to Embed. It's online here. So let me go to the website and do embed.org. And when you get here, you always have to click on this classic developer site button to get to the, get to the types of things that we are developing. So when you get here, you can just search for MaxRefDes. 117. Uh, 117, MaxRefDes 117. And it'll take you to the right place for this firmware. Okay, so it says RD117 embed. Is that the right stuff? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. Now, I've actually already preloaded this onto my compiler, so we're just going to jump over there and um, pull up my compiler, and I've got it right here. So up comes the, uh, up comes the embed code, and we just double check that we're on the right platform board, Max32600 embed. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just compile that code and let it run a little bit. Okay, so then I, I configure my computer so I can just save the file right away to my embed drive. platform, embed drive. So we just click on that guy, save it, and we should be good. We should have, have downloaded it and everything, right? Right, right. Okay, okay. It's just that easy. So then we'll go ahead and pull up our terminal program here and set the serial port to, it's coming up as 36 for me, mm -hmm. and set up our serial communication speed, baud rate of 115K, yes, right? Yes, 115K. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it says press any key to start conversion. So I think we're kind of in the same space we were before, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to put my, do you want to put your finger on it? You want to try it? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'll rotate it a little bit for you guys at home. Gordon will put his yeah. finger on there. All right. You good to go? Yes. Okay. And now we've started the measurement here. The first couple measurements just come in as your red and IR readings because the algorithm needs a little time to have a few, few readings to stabilize. And now we're seeing Gordon's heart rate. Looks like it's Stabilizing there around. Give me a few Whoa, seconds. it's going crazy, Gordon. Come yeah, on, what are you yeah. doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's not flat. The board okay. Is not. Now you've got some good stuff here. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and log this, and we'll, we'll take some of the data and show people. Does that sound good? Okay. So I think I hit, if I hit something on here to do a log, right? Okay. I can log this guy. I'll save it to my desktop. And I'm just going to call it uh, HR test. So we'll save it. And we'll gather a little bit more data here uh, for you guys at home. Stay tuned. Pretty good stuff here. And maybe we'll stop it now. How does that sound? Okay. Okay. So uh, how do I stop the log? Uh, you open the log window. There's oh, a separate window. a separate window? Yeah. Where is that? Down here? Okay, I'll pause it. Okay, and close. And close it. Okay, great. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull that log up. Mm -hmm. We'll probably we'll probably like cut and come back for a second here because I, I have to like pull that log into Excel. So um, we may cut off, we may not. Uh, we'll just keep going here, and when we have the file up, we'll get everything going here. Gordon, let's 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 pull up the. Uh, the IR data, the red LED data okay. instead, see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to find and replace red equals with nothing. And okay, we're going to pull this guy up. So let's pull up, a, insert a chart. Mm -hmm. And see what we get. Okay, so for you guys here at home, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this chart a little bit bigger, and, and we're gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on with the data here. So what we've got is the is the raw data that we pulled from Gordon's test on the embed board uh, from the red LED. Okay, and we're gonna kind of zoom in on this a little bit. I'm gonna uh, reduce the um, the size of the of the um, axis here. So I think, let's look at that. That data is right around between 100,000 and 120,000. Right. So we will format the axis. Minimum is going to be 100,000. Okay, and we can start to see stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in even more. I'm going to make it 1, 1. Let's see, one, okay, great. So if you can see that chart on the screen here, oops, got that guy a little bit too big, a little squirrely here. 
Let's see if we can get that back in. I want I want users to see this because I think there's a pretty good explanation here. Can you tell the users, Gordon, kind of what we're seeing uh, on this chart in terms of the spikes there and, and how that gets interpreted in terms of heart rate? Okay, so you see the triangular wave there. That's actually our heartbeat. And then um, there's some uh, spikes, probably just uh, my, my hand's moving, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not picking up the right uh, value. Um, so I, I, I can explain a little bit about how our algorithm actually calculates heart rate. Uh, our heartbeat data, uh, heartbeat signal appears at the output of the sensor. Okay. Looks like uh, the triangular wave like that. And then there are uh, a lot of noise, high frequency noise on it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing uh, the algorithm does is to uh, do the moving average, to calculate the moving average of the signal. Okay. So it will eliminate uh, a lot of the high frequency noises. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, you will calculate the derivative of the signal. Uh, basically, it's just try to find the slope of the signal. So when the okay. signal is going up, you will see um, the positive number okay. uh, on, on the dx dt. And then uh, when the uh, signal is going down, you will see a negative number. So at the end, you will see positive numbers and negative numbers, this type of um, repeating pattern. After that, the algorithm applies a hamming window to this function. So it will uh, smoothen out all the edges to okay. make it look more like a uh, sine wave. Okay. And then um, finally, the algorithm will, uh, will determine where the peaks are. Uh, so based on the timing distance between the peaks mm -hmm. and also the sampling rate, which is a known value. Okay, what's the sample rate on the embed board? Uh, on the embed board is 100 hertz. Okay. 100, 100 sample per second. Okay. Yeah, okay. based on these two uh, data, uh, you can calculate the corresponding frequency, and that is your heart rate. Okay, very cool, very yeah. cool. And, and from a visual standpoint here, are we, um, is each spike essentially a heartbeat? Is that yes. the heart rate? Yes. Okay, cool. But obviously you need a, a complex algorithm here to extract all that and give right, you a numerical right. value. To normalize all that, yes. Okay, very cool. So, so that's you know that's the kind of thing you can you can uh, create with this reference design. And I mean, Gordon, any any vision, any view on what people can do with this thing? What do you what would you like <laughs> to see people do with this thing? Well, well this is a very interesting design. Um, people can actually uh, make a lot of fun stuff like putting putting that part in a Halloween costume or something. Sure, uh, sure, and then, absolutely. And then show the heartbeat on the street. Uh, but of course, uh, people can also create some serious products using our reference design as well. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and, and hopefully people do both, absolutely. Yes. So I promised you one last demo here, so we're gonna clear the deck here and bring in a uh, a special demo here that Gordon created. Uh, I mentioned earlier the Adafruit board. So we've got the Adafruit Flora here and we've wired it up with a, with a battery here and our heart rate monitor, the MaxRef Des 117, of course, that we've been talking about. And we've also got a uh, Bluetooth low energy communications board. I think this is the Blue, Blue Fruit. Blue Fruit, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on and show you how we can communicate right to an app here and operate. So I'm just gonna turn this guy on and I'm gonna put it on here. We've got this sort of neat little connection here that allows for a pretty good uh, uh, constant pressure connection, I would say, constant yes. pressure to the, uh, to the finger here. And then I gotta lean forward a little bit, get this, Gordon, can you tip that up just so it, so it um, yes. rotates the screen? Thanks. There we go. And then go ahead and select that app. We're gonna wait a few seconds here. Okay, and we're communicating. My heart rate is hovering right around high 70s, low 80s, a little yes. pop there. And the LED here reflects your heartbeat. Exactly, that, that was one thing I wanted to point out. I think that, that our embed board does that, but the, Ada, the I'm sorry, the Arduino doesn't, right? The Arduino doesn't. Uno doesn't have the ability to adjust the brightness of the LED. That's why it's missing this feature. Okay, yeah. and that's, uh, that's also, that's not just an LED flash, that's an actual PDMM signal yes. to the LED, right? Yes. Okay, yes. 
So very cool. So this is an example of the type of thing you can do. We put it on a headband here. You can wear it around your head, stick that clip on your ear, put it in a bicycle helmet, put it in a glove, any sort of thing that would be a cool wearables product or project. So I think that's about it. Gordon, was there anything else you wanted to mention here? Mm, I think that's all. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. We hope you like this, this design. We hope this video was helpful and useful. You can rewind and see how to wire this guy up and get moving right away on this design. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you.